right, last step. We've looked at the firm's demand curve. We know what its marginal revenue curve is. And now we want to figure out how it maximizes its profits. And to do that, we need to know not just the revenue side, the demand side, we need to know the cost side of what's going on with the company. What are their costs? In particular, to maximize profit, what is a profit maximization rule? Operate at that quantity, produce and sell that quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Well, let's make, let's make this one a little easy, right? Let's say that the marginal cost for this company, the cost of producing each additional unit, is constant. It is a constant $8 per unit. So that this company's marginal cost curve is a straight line at $8. So they have a horizontal marginal cost curve, which, do you remember this? If it's horizontal, it's also their average total cost curve. See if you remember why, okay? And what we're looking for then is this point where the two intersect, where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. If you've looked at some of my YouTube videos or the textbooks or the, at least the explanations I've been using, we call that point alpha. Alpha tells us how many units to produce. How do we figure this out? How do we figure out how many units to produce? And the answer is, go back to the marginal revenue equation. Remember that when we did the inverse demand? Marginal revenue was equal to what? 50 minus 0 0.40 Q. And we know the marginal cost is what? $8. We set those two equal, and so we have 50 minus 0 0.40 Q equals 8. Subtracting over, we get minus 0 0.40 Q equals minus 42. Solving, we get Q equals negatives cancel 42 over 40. What's that going to be? This is a point 40. If you solve that, it's 105. So the quantity here for profit maximization is 105 units, and that's associated with what price? Remember how to do that? Price was what? 50 minus 0 0.20 QD. Remember that? The inverse demand equation? So we get what? 50 minus 0 0.20 of 105. So what's 20% of 105? You got it? 20% of 105. 50 minus 21. So the price should be $29. All right? When we, read, when we read across here, that's associated with a price of $29, and now they're maximizing their profit. Now, just as a quick aside, you might want to remember, too, that the difference between average cost and price is their profit per unit times this many units. If it helps to see it gra uh, graphically, this is their profit. It's the difference between price and average cost multiplied times the number of units they produce. What would that be? That would be 29 minus 8 is $21 times 105 units. So whatever that is, what is that? That is their profit. Okay? That's where we're going with this. Now, in a, in, in a more realistic sense, we know this isn't specific. This isn't precise. But with the assumptions we've made, we at least have a point of beginning in our discussion that says, looks like our profit maximizing price is somewhere around $29 a unit. Given that our costs are constant, we know those, and this is our best estimate of what our demand curve looks like, it's a first approximation to how our pricing strategy ought to be looking at about a $29 price unless we discover some more information in the market through our research 
that reveals that, in fact, the, the demand curve is a little steeper, a little flatter. It, in fact, exists a little further out here. So we're constantly looking for our data for the demand curve. But once we get that data, or data we think we can depend on, then we can start backing into what kind of pricing strategy should we be pursuing to try to maximize the profit in this organization. And remember, it all starts from two things, right? We need to know our demand. So we go out in the market and we research it the best we can. And we need to know our costs. So we rely on our accountants or uh, internal uh, controls to tell us what is, in fact, our cost, our marginal cost of producing each additional unit. Okay, thanks.